post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, are you going to break into this apartment? I don't have to, Patsy. Sally gave me her key. Oh, gee, you think of everything, don't you? I try to. Okay, come on in. Uh-huh. Well, this is certainly a pleasant living room. Nothing sinister here. Uh-huh. Looks as though there are two bedrooms, too. wonder whether this one is married. Let's see what... Oh! Great Scott! Nick! This girl's been shot through the temple. Oh, Nick, I wonder if she... Somebody just came in the front door. It's all right, Miss Carlyle. It's... And now, the case of the quiet roommate. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's late in the afternoon, and Nick and Patsy are in the lavish office of John Fenrus, president of the Fenrus department store. I'm glad you brought Miss Bone to the store with you, Mr. Carter. She'll understand this business. You said you were being annoyed by a blackmailer, Mr. Fenrus. Precisely. The girl who worked here until last Saturday night is trying to shake me down for a lot of money. You were involved with her? Of course not. Nothing of the sort. Then what's the trouble? Our fashion designs are being stolen. Oh, you mean that the clothes sold in the Fenrus store are exclusive? A great many of them are, Miss Bone. Two years ago, I hired Jerry Bartlett, one of the best dress designers in the business, to create designs exclusively for the Fenrus store. Well, I knew Fenrus models couldn't be bought anywhere else in town. Yeah, but that's but... the point. They can be now. Oh? The cut-rate stores have our exclusive styles at marked down prices before we even put them on sale here. Oh, that can't be very profitable. Profitable? We've lost a fortune. And this girl says she knows how our fashions are being pirated and who's responsible for it. And she won't tell you who it is? Tell me. She has the gall to ask $2,500 for the information. Then you want me to find out who's stealing your design? No. I want you to force Mary Danville to give me that information. Without paying for it, you mean? I have a right to know. And it's her duty to tell me without blackmailing me. I want you to scare her. Scaring girls is out of my line, Mr. Fenris. You want me to investigate your problem? Oh, you so you want to run up a lot of investigating fees, do you? Well, I won't fall for it. I'm not asking you to fall for anything. I'm responsible to the board of directors for every dollar I spend. It isn't my money. It's your store, isn't it? Well, it was my father's store. Now it belongs to a great many people. And they expect me to show a profit. I can't throw money away on detectives. Well, it's probably just as well, Mr. Fenris. I don't think I'd enjoy working for you anyway. Mr. Carter, if my secretary were here, I'd have I'd have her show you out. Oh, we can find our way out. Come on, Betsy. With pleasure. Mr. Fenris. Miss Carlyle, do you think my office is a public waiting room? Miss Drake isn't at her desk, and I have to see you. Just the same. What you do to Mary Danville is none of my business. But when you start ransacking my apartment, just because... Control yourself, Miss Carlyle. I've done no such thing. Then if you didn't do it, you hired someone to. Your accusations are in particularly bad taste in front of outsiders, Miss Carlyle. Oh, don't worry about us, Mr. Fenris. This young lady's outburst hasn't changed my opinion of you a bit. I think I'd like to talk to Miss Carlyle privately, though. I forbid it. Oh, you do? I certainly do. This man's a detective, Miss Carlyle. Fine. Mr. Detective, if you'll come down to the Fenris exclusive shop, I'd like very much to talk to you privately. <laughs> I didn't imagine you'd have a private office like this, Miss Carlyle. Oh, yes, Mr. Carter. I'm in charge of the Fenrus exclusive shop. But with a job like that, I should think you'd be afraid to antagonize Mr. Fenrus. Wouldn't you hate to be fired? He won't fire me, Miss Bowen. What makes you so sure? Because Mr. Fenrus is the only person in the world who would have any reason for ransacking the apartment that Mary and I share. He wants the information Mary has. Hmm. Do you have it too, Miss Carlyle? No. But if I did, I'd do exactly what she's doing. I'd make him pay for it. Hmm. Uh, was the lock on your apartment door broken? No, it wasn't. But somebody had been there because Mary's wardrobe trunk had been turned inside out and my room had been all torn up, too. Was anything stolen? Nothing of mine, and Mary says Fenris didn't find what he was after. I see. Miss Colonel, you said Mary Danville hasn't told you what she knows about the fashion theft. Are you and your roommate on friendly terms? Yes, of course. 
I got the store to hire her, and I also saw to it that she was pushed ahead. But she still doesn't trust you enough to tell you. That is not the point. She said I'd be better off not knowing that what she discovered was dynamite. Look, Miss Carlyle, I don't want to alarm you, but can you get a room for yourself and marry Danville at a hotel for a few nights? Why, uh, well, I suppose so. And I'd do it if I were you. And I wouldn't let anybody know where I was staying. But everything's happened while I've been here at the store. Nobody would dare to try anything while Mary and I were at home. I'm not too sure of that. Is Mary at your apartment now? I think so. Why? I want to talk to her, and I'd also like to examine your apartment. Do you want me to take you there now? No, I want you to line up a hotel room. Besides, Patsy and I may do better talking to Mary alone. If you think... I don't think anything yet, Miss Carlyle, except that you may not find it healthy to stay in your apartment. All right, Mr. Carter, I'll do whatever you say. I can hear somebody in there, Nick. Maybe she's afraid to open the door. It's Danville. Sally Carlisle sent us. I'm Nick Carter, a private investigator. Look, Miss Danville, I know you're in there because I heard you moving around. Hmm. I guess she isn't going to let us in, Nick. I'm going to camp right here on your doorstep till you open this door, Miss Danville. I'm here to help you if I can. What? Well, now, you're being sensible. I don't know you. What? Miss Bone and I would like you to tell us what you can about your apartment being searched recently. Sally Carlisle told us about it, Miss Danville. Nick and I are here to investigate. So if you'll let us in? Uh, I'm in a hurry right now. I, I have a date. Couldn't you come back some other time? I'm afraid this can't wait, Miss Danville. But I can't... Talk... There's one thing I want particularly to know. Was anything stolen from your wardrobe trunk? No. Miss Carlyle thinks Mr. Fenrus did the searching. So what? Well, do you have any idea? Uh, look, Mr. What's-Your-Name, I told you I'm in a hurry. I'm late for my date now. And, and... Is your date with a gentleman friend? Well, yes, my date with a man. Then we'll just talk to you here outside your door till he arrives. But I'm to meet him downstairs in the lobby. Oh? Your callers meet you in the lobby, do they? Look, I don't know you. Maybe you're a detective and maybe you're not. But until Sally's here to say you're okay, I'm not going to talk to you. I'm ready to leave, and I'm going right now. You're making a mistake, Miss Danville. Maybe, maybe not. But don't try to follow me down to the lobby. If you do, I'll... I'll call the police. Very well. We won't even go down in the same elevator with you. Go right ahead. That's what I intend to do. Nick, aren't you going to follow her? No. I'm going to wait here and see what she does. But what do you expect her to do? Let's see if you were Miss Danville. Would you leave two strangers standing in front of your door after a conversation like the one we've just had? Well, that all depends. Depends nothing. You'd meet your boyfriend in the lobby and then get right back up here to see what's going on. Well, if you ask me, I don't think she has a date. You don't? No. And if she did, it wasn't with a man. Well, why do you say that? Well, she didn't powder her nose and it was shiny. And her lipstick wasn't on straight. No, Nick. I have a feeling she just wanted to get away from this apartment as fast as she could. Hey, maybe you're right. Mm. Come on, let's get inside and see what was bothering her. What? Oh, Nick, you aren't going to break into that apartment, are you? Don't have to. Sally Carlisle gave me her key. Oh, gee, you think of everything, don't you? Sure, I do. All right, come on. Right. Well, it's certainly a pleasant living room. Nothing sinister here. Mm-hmm. Looks as though there were two bedrooms. I wonder which one is Mary Danville. Well, not this one. Uh, at least I wouldn't think so. Why not? Because the picture's on the vanity. And you'd hardly have your own picture in your room. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> so Mary Danville's room must be the other one. Of course. Well, let's see what's there. Great Scott. Nick. No wonder Mary wanted to get away. She's gone on the floor. She's been shot through the temple. Nick, do you suppose... Quiet. Uh... Somebody just came in the front door. Let's listen. Maybe we can hear something. Okay. Who's there? Who is it? You wait here, Sally. No, Gary, don't. Let's get out of here and call the police. Nonsense. Whoever you are, come on out or I'll shoot. It's all right, Miss Carlyle. It's... Oh, Gary, you fool. That's the detective. Oh, Mr. Carter, are you hurt? Not a bit, Miss Carlyle, but tell your trigger-happy friend to quit pointing that revolver at me. Oh, I'm sorry, old fellow, but I, I was nervous. After what's been happening here, well, I... It's good most people can't hit anything with a revolver. This is Gary Bartlett, our fashion designer, Nick Carter, and his secretary, Miss Bowen. Uh, how do you do? I'm awfully sorry I frightened you, but I, I was... I thought I told you not to come back here, Miss Carlyle. I know, but I got to thinking about Mary Danville, and... Well, if it was dangerous for me to be here, it was dangerous for her, too. So I came up to get her. Well, she just left a few minutes ago. Oh, I see. 
Oh, well, in that case, Jerry, I suppose we might as well leave, too. Right. Just a minute, Miss Carlisle. Did you see your roommate in the lobby just now? In the lobby? No. Well, there's somebody else in this apartment. In one of the bedrooms. You mean you've caught our mysterious visitor? Oh, that's wonderful. But who is... Suppose you take a look. That's a good idea. <gasps> oh, no. No. Recognize her, Miss Carlisle? Of course we recognize her. But that's Mary Danville. What? You mean this murdered girl is your roommate? Oh, yes. Oh, but why would anyone... Mr. Carter, you've got to catch her murderer. You've got to. I think I did catch her murderer, Miss Carlisle. But I let her get away. <clears throat> Mary Danville was apparently murdered by the girl who made a cool, daring getaway. But the fugitive's picture is on Sally Carlisle's vanity, so we should know who she was in just a moment. Now back to The Case of the Quiet Roommate. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. The scene is Sally Carlisle's bedroom, and Nick stares grimly at the photograph he's removed from Sally's dressing table. This is a picture of the girl who left your apartment just as we arrived. Who is she, Miss Carlyle? Why, that's Dorothy Drake. Is she a particularly good friend of yours? Well, she gave me the picture, and she stops in to see me once in a while, that's all. She's friend was a secretary, so everybody in the store tries to get in solid with her. Oh, I see. Well, I think she can give him a boost with Fenris. She really have that much influence with him? Well, if I think I'll have trouble getting Fenris to okay one of my fashion designs, I try to sell Dorothy on it first. If it's okay with her, you'll take it. Oh, then she gets to see your designs before they're approved? Well, sure she does. Uh-huh. Who else sees them? Well, Fenris, of course, and Sally. Oh, well, yes, I see them, too. Do you think this Dorothy Drake would commit murder to help Fenris? You said she was here in this apartment when you got here, didn't you? Yes, she was. Well, I don't see why you let her get away. Well, she told us she was Mary Danville. We had no reason to doubt her. But she doesn't look the least bit like Mary. Don't forget, Miss Carlyle, I never saw Mary Danville before. And we didn't find Mary's body until after Dorothy Drake had left. She must have killed Mary. All you have to do is find her. You know where she lives? Well, sure, there's no secret about that. It's over on Prince Street. But she won't be there. Mary must have known that she was the fashion thief. Oh, just a minute, Miss Carlyle. We can't assume that she's guilty of Mary's murder or of the fashion thefts either. You and Mr. Bartlett, Mr. Fenris all had access to the fashion design. But if she isn't guilty, why did she run away? We don't know that she has run away. If she's smart, we'll find her at home. Let's see if she is smart. All right, all right, come in. You don't seem surprised to see us, Miss Drake. I knew you'd be here after me. Well, are you coming in? Thanks. We are. I suppose you found Mary's body? We did. And I suppose you expect me to say I didn't kill her? Naturally. And I suppose you won't believe me when I do. Well, you lied to us at Sally Carlisle's apartment. Of course I lied. I was frightened. I just found Mary's body. You mean she was dead when you went into her apartment? Yes, she was. And how did you get in? I... I, I had a key. Where'd you get it? That's none of your business. Solving murders is my business, Miss Drake, and unless you give me some straight answers, I'm going to escort you down to headquarters. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Why not? I'll sue you for false arrest, and I'll collect. You seem pretty sure of yourself. You'll find out how sure I am if you try to make trouble for me. You think Mr. Fenris will back you up, huh? I wouldn't count on that if I were you. No? Look, if you're going to take that attitude, Miss Drake, I'll have to show you I'm not bluffing. Come on. Come on where? To headquarters. Where do you think? Now, look, you can't I do... certainly can. And if you won't come willingly with me, I'll have Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad here within ten minutes. You just try it and see what'll happen. Very well. Where's the telephone, Miss Drake? It's in the hall, Nick. Fine. Call Matty, will Right. You? No! Don't you dip! Walter! Mr. Carter. Well? If I were you, I wouldn't make any phone calls until I knew what I was doing. Why, Mr. Fenrod... I won't have my secretary, myself, or the store mixed up in a murder scandal, Carter. And if you do it, I'll run you right out of business. What are you doing here, Fenris? He came because I called him as soon as I got away from Mary Danville's apartment. Okay, now that we're back to that, Miss Drake, I still want to know why you went there. She was following orders, Carter. Your orders? Naturally. I was entitled to the information the Danville girl said she had, and I was going to get it. Even if you had to steal it. Her attempt to extort money from me was outside the law. You have to fight fire with fire. So you gave Miss Drake the key to Miss Danville's apartment. I did. Why did you get it? 
We have a key shop in the basement of our store. I borrowed Sally Carlyle's key from her locker long enough to have a duplicate made. Did you borrow it with Sally's permission? I told you. You have to fight. I know. You have to fight fire with fire. Okay, so you had Miss Drake sneak into Miss Danville's apartment. What was she supposed to steal? Mary Danville claimed she had a package of correspondence that proved the identity of the fashion thief. I wanted it. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You say you sent your secretary to get the letters Mary Danville had? I did. But before she'd had any chance to let you know whether she got them or not, you called me and asked me to get them. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. I had no intention of hiring you. From what I'd heard about you, I was quite sure you wouldn't take the job. Suppose I'd said I would. I'd have found some excuse for not hiring you. Then why did you call me? That's really very simple, Carter. If Miss Drake had been successful in getting those letters, Mary Danville would have immediately accused me of having her apartment burglarized. But I would have been in a position to deny it. How? I could have proved that I was trying to hire a detective to get the letters for me at the very time somebody else was actually getting them. Very clever, Fenris. And now you've put your secretary right on the spot. He has not. I was... You were in the apartment with Mary Danville's body when we found you, Mr. Rick, and you admit why you were there. But that doesn't mean By the I... way, did you get the letters? No. When I saw Mary's body, I didn't even stop to look for them. I think perhaps you did. What? I think perhaps you found them and didn't want Mr. Fenris to know you found them. You're accusing Miss Drake of being the fashion thief, and that's preposterous. Mary Danville's murder is preposterous too, Fenris, but it happened. Just the same. Did anybody else except Miss Drake check out at the store just before the murder? Yes. Sally Carlyle took an extra hour at lunchtime because she said she was nervous about her apartment and wanted to go home to check things. How about Jerry Bartlett? Say, I remember now. What? He came in while you were out, Mr. Fenris, and said he wanted an hour off to attend to some personal business, and I told him it would be all right. So nobody's eliminated. Well, looks as though our first job is to find those letters. But where are you going to look for them? I don't know, Mr. Fenris, but I'm going to start looking just the same. And when I get any information, you can be sure I'll let you know. Miss Bowen, what's the idea of summoning all of us here to Carter's office in this high-handed manner? He has some information for you. He isn't even here. He said he'd be delayed a bit, Mr. Fenris. Delayed? Doesn't he know my time's valuable? Should we go back to the store, Mr. Fenris? You can go back if you like, but I'm staying right here. Oh, you are, are you? We'll see about that. I'm staying, too. Mr. Carter must have had an important reason for asking us to come here. The only thing that's important to me is to find out who's been stealing our fashion design. You mean murder doesn't bother you? Mary Danville was outside the law, Miss Bone. She deserved what she got. Did Carter say how soon he'd be here? I'm sorry. He didn't. Just the same, we'll wait until he gets here. All of us. This is an outrage. We've been here nearly two hours, and I refuse to submit to such treatment any longer. Where is Carter, anyway? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Fenris. All he said over the phone the last time he called... Was... I know. He said to tell us to wait. Well, I'm not going to wait any longer. I'll bet you are. Your curiosity wouldn't let you do anything else. What the devil's he up to, anyway? Oh, Miss Board wouldn't tell, even if she knew, Jerry. Oh, is not to reason why. Oh, is just to wait. And... Hi, everybody. Well, it's about time, Carter. Do you realize you've kept us waiting here? Yes, Mr. Fenris, I've kept you waiting about two hours. Well, your explanation better be good. I'm a busy man. My explanation's very good. I intended to keep you people waiting here when I called you. Why, of all the colossal nerve... I had to get you here so I could search your homes without being disturbed. You mean you... I mean I've made a thorough search, Miss Drake, with the full approval of the police department. I'll... I'll have you thrown into jail. I'll have you... Calm down, calm down, Mr. Fenris. You said the proper way to fight fire was with fire, remember? I confound you. You are interested in results, Fenris. Well, I've got results right here in this package. What's in it? The letters that cost Mary Danville her life, all ready to be turned over to the police. Have you read them? I haven't even examined them. I thought I'd prefer to do that with everyone present. Well, why wait any longer, then? I don't intend to wait. No, I'll take care of this. Nobody's going to frame me. Nick, he's got a gun. So I see. Has anyone accused you of anything, Mr. Bartlett? No, and nobody's going to. Well, as long as you have that gun in your hand, I suppose you're right. You just keep away from me if you don't want this gun to go off. Now, let's see these letters. Why, they're... They aren't the letters at all. Carter's trying to trick us. Quite right, Mr. Fenris. They're fakes. I didn't even look for the letters. What? You, what? you didn't look for them. No, I didn't. 
Mr. Fenris, how did you know these letters are fake? Why? You said you'd never seen the letters, and yet you know at once these aren't genuine. How about that? Carter, are you accusing me of something? Yes. I'm accusing you of Mary Danville's murder. That's utterly ridiculous. You don't think I'd steal my own fashions, do you? They aren't your fashions. That's just the point, Venris. They aren't your fashions. Now, see here. You're president of the store because of your name, because your father founded the business. The money you made stealing those fashions and selling them was probably more than your salary. So, Fenris murdered Mary, then deliberately sent me to her apartment so that if anything went wrong, I'd be the suspect. Miss Drake, don't be a fool. I'm not anymore. I'm getting smart. The rest of us had to check out before we could leave the store, but you didn't. And I'm the only one who knows you weren't around the store at the time of the murder. Nick, that's right. She said Mr. Fenris was out. So she told Jerry Bartlett it would be all right for him to leave. Look, Carter, it may be news to you, but there aren't any letters. There aren't? No. Mary and I worked out that scheme because I thought Fenris suspected me. What scheme? Well, you see, it was like this. I, I paid Mary to quit her job and make Fenris that proposition. My professional reputation was at stake, and I thought I could get the fashion thief to show his hand that way. If you knew there weren't any letters, why did you pull that gun? Well, I, I got excited, I guess. I knew there weren't any letters, and then when you showed up with a whole bundle of them, I, I figured I was being framed with fake letters. I wasn't going to stand for that. Oh, you've all lost your senses. Believing that fantastic story about hiring Mary Danville. Look at him with his gun in his hand. Jerry, look out! Oh, 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 I Not quick enough, Bartlett. I'm not Don't try to get your gun back, not unless you want a slug in the heart. And that goes for all of you. <laughs> Mr. Fenrus, covering the group with the revolver he grabbed from Bartlett, edges his way toward the door of Nick Carter's office. We'll see what happens in just a moment. And now for the conclusion of The Case of the Quiet Roommate, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. <coughs> Mr. Fenrus, revolver in one hand, reaches for the door of Nick's office with the other. So you thought Mary Danville knew you'd been selling those fashion designs, huh, Fenris? And that's why you killed her. Yes. I thought she was all set to blackmail me for the rest of my life. It's Bartlett's fault that I killed her. Oh, I, you, you can't hang the blame on me, Fenris. And you can't leave this office either. Try to stop me. See what happens to you. I have a trick lock on the door to prevent just that thing. But, Nick... I snapped the secret catch when I came into the room. You will never be able to find it, Fenris. Thanks for telling me, Carter. In that case, I'll let you find it for me. Oh, no, no dice. You don't have any choice. Get over here and open this door or I'll blow your head off. Well, I mean it. Okay. I guess you got me. Get it open. And be quick about it. All right, all right. Take it easy, Fenris. I can't be quick about it. First you twist the door handle slightly to the left like this. And a full turn to the right like this. Don't try any funny business, Carter. I'm right behind you. And I'm ready to pull the trigger if I have to. I'm sure you are. Now you turn the door knob to the left again. And open it. No, wait. Right, give me the gun, Fenner. Give it to me before I break your arm. Trick me. You slam the door into me. And I'm going to slam my left fist right into your face if you don't drop that gun. No. You. All right. I've got it, Carter. All right, good. Hold on to it this time. I didn't want to kill Mary Danville. I thought I had to do it. I'm sorry I can't sympathize with you. You tricked me, Carter. How did you know? I didn't know, Fenris. Didn't have any idea who was guilty. But you remember what I said about guilty people running away? But... That's why I arranged this meeting, to give the murderer a chance to try to run away. And it worked. But if there weren't any letters, Nick, if Mary Danville didn't have any letters... There were letters, Patsy. They're, they're... But she didn't have them. Oh. The letters were from Fenris to the people who bought the fashion designs from him. Yes. They wouldn't buy unless I gave them something to put them in the clear in case the store ever brought any suits against them. I thought she got hold of those letters in some way. But you acted as though you thought I was double-crossing you. Oh, you had me half crazy. I had to accuse someone, didn't I? And you're still trying to justify yourself, aren't you? The store should have been mine. I only got a small part of what I deserved. Well, starting right now, Fenris, you're going to get more than a small part of what you deserve. You're going to get the work. <laughs> Let's hear something about the adventure new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to bring us next week. Mike, it started when Patsy and I went on a visit to another city and were greeted by a welcoming committee. A welcoming committee with machine guns, no less. See, I went there to look for a gangster, but I spent most of my time looking for Patsy. Um, you see, Mike, I found the gangster first, 
And uh, I was sorry I ever did, believe me. Yeah, Patsy pretended to be a gun mall. She played the part entirely too well for her own safety. That sounds as though we're in for an exciting half hour, Nick. What do you call this adventure? I call it The Case of the Great Impersonation. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by George B. Anderson. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. With millions of additional children entering our schools during the next few years, the nation faces serious educational handicaps. Inferior education for our boys and girls may damage our prosperity, our traditions of freedom, our security. That's why we urge every adult to work with local civic groups and school boards to help improve educational conditions. Show by your interest and friendliness that you appreciate the importance of your children's teachers. They mold our nation's future. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.